Uh, good day. Uh, welcome to Portsmouth This Week. This is the show being uh, filmed on the 22nd of March, 2013. I'm Jeff Richard. I'll be hosting today. <clears throat> the subject of our conversation um, will be our school committee. And with me is the chair of our school committee, Dave Croston. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. The, uh, <clears throat> the school system, of course, uh, occupies a considerable portion of the budget in our town. So <clears throat> it couldn't be more important. Um, as a, uh, as, a, as a base for our tax structure and for an opportunity for students to get the kind of education that we'd all hope that they uh, could have. So I, <clears throat> what I thought I would do today uh, with Dave is uh, talk a little bit about our school system. Uh, <clears throat> for those of you who are not completely familiar with it, um, can you just give us a <clears throat> quick snapshot, Dave, about Portsmouth School System? Certainly. Jeff, I want to thank you for inviting me on Portsmouth this week. Uh, it's an honor. Um, so the system itself, we have four schools, um, two elementary schools uh, that are K through three, and then we have a middle school which is uh, four through eight, and then obviously the high school. Um, we have roughly about 2,650 students. Of that, um, roughly 100 from uh, Little Compton. They pay into our district uh, about a million dollars a year in revenue. Um, about 200 teachers. Uh, are, we belong to a regional special education uh, consortium, which is Middletown, uh, Little Compton, Tiverton, and Portsmouth. Uh, there are 437 students uh, actually receiving services. Um, so that basically encompasses what our, our daily population is. Uh, how, how have those population uh, demographics changed since you've joined the team? What, are, we, <laughs> are we heading down a little bit? Yeah, I hope it's not because I joined the team. Um, uh, I didn't mean to imply that. The general birth rate is, is, yeah, is right. declining. Um, so every single year we, we lose between 40 to 50 uh, students a year. Um, and uh, it is disconcerting when we actually okay. see where our school population is going. Um, in, in the next, let's say, five years, we'll probably be close to about 2,400 in our system. Uh, that being said, um, as you get smaller, it's harder to actually have the diversity of, of programming. Yeah, and so exactly, yeah. the natural, Either we do something to um, actually keep our numbers higher, which we'll talk about, um, I'm sure, uh, this, this morning, um, or um, w there's going to be a natural desire to, to regionalize some of the districts to, uh, to make sure that we're, we gain that efficiency. Yeah, so. I was thinking, <coughs> we've, uh, Lynn Krisick was here, your superintendent, and we chatted about uh, the regionalization side of it, and particularly AP courses. and. The, Anyway, <clears throat> certainly is a, is a uh, is an issue that you will have to contend with is a population issue, and it's <clears throat> statewide. It's not just our town. I think it's something that the entire state is uh, having to deal with. No question. But as you <clears throat> recall, I mean, regionalization was a topic over the last yeah. uh, two years, and the studies were basically pointing to the benefits of regionalization to the island. But um, Portsmouth clearly held yeah, themselves right. out from that, yeah. and uh, that. at the end, uh, we proved the studies wrong, and, and it would have an additional cost to the taxpayers mm -hmm. of Portsmouth. It would actually have a cost to us in our, uh, our performance numbers. So, um, you know, I think we held firm that uh, right now Portsmouth is best uh, with its own, uh, uh, you know, uh, system. And I, we're going to challenge ourselves to try to keep yeah. our population high and keep our, uh, our AP level um, at the highest in the island, if not in the state. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll get into more, I think, our, yeah. some of our initiatives around science technology. I think we, <coughs> we were going to talk about <coughs> capital budgeting towards the uh, latter part of this conversation. But, but to, <coughs> to sort of attach the capital budgeting to what you said about if we're going to stay where we are with the schools that we have, we're going to have to keep them intact, improve them, I suppose, rewire occasionally, uh, sprinkle. I mean, are they all sprinkled now, or do we still have to sprinkle some of our schools? No. So we, um, approximately six years ago, we got a waiver on the elementary schools as we okay. tried to assess what yeah. long term um, we will be doing with those schools. Those schools are going through, Melville will be uh, sprinkled uh, this summer, 
uh, at a cost of roughly about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And that was put in the budget a couple of. It was in the years capital ago? improvement plan from a year ago. Okay. Uh, we have forty percent reimbursement because it's a health and safety uh, um, upgrade of the school. Okay. So reimbursement from the state. From or the, the state. Fighters? So it's housing aid, and we receive the broke 40 state. The state that's broken. That's I mean, it. <laughs> fiscally broken. Well, we're happy to at least yeah. get our mm. our pennies uh, there you go. back to the island. Um, and then Hathaway will be another seven hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar capital uh, commitment. What a couple of years down the pike? Uh, it will be just a year. So okay. we're going to do one school this summer and one okay. school next summer. Very good. And that, that clears the waiver so that the state is now happy with us, as it were. Well, <clears throat> I mean, when you have four hundred kids in a in mm -hmm. an elementary school, and uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it yeah. is the state requirement. Yeah, so uh, this is just a code issue. Yeah. Um, and I think our challenge would be, are we going to actually bond Hathaway or are we going to pay for it out of surplus? And I mean, so we are actively now engaged. We, we're going to talk about a budget, but we, mm -hmm. we, we got our annual budget over to, or we will next week mm -hmm. to the town council. The next great, uh, uh, you know, kind of work product for us is the uh, capital uh, side and how do yeah. we uh, look at long term at sure. our capital needs yep. and Good. so Good. we'll be focused on that. I guess the budget uh, made the news <laughs> uh, because the uh, school side budget is such a percentage of the total budget. Um, <clears throat> any remarkable increases are going to get reflected in the tax levy very quickly. But you've sent across um, a flat, basically a flat budget from, from last year. We have. Yeah. Um, so you have to tell me how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so some of the things, uh, and, and we, we've gone out and attracted a new uh, director of uh, finance and administration. And in doing so, we've asked that uh, administration actually focus on as much as possible the actual expense to run the district. And as you know, over the number of years, um, there have been uh, surpluses. Mm -hmm. And by actually trying to hold um, ourselves to actual expenditure versus rolling over, mm -hmm. let's say, budgets from yeah. past years, um, we've been able to really kind of now uh, identify mm -hmm. where the surplus has been driven from. That being said, um, we 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 were able to actually uh, kind of rebuild the budget and everyone talks about the bottom up but mm -hmm. we truly did rebuild the budget. This budget was being done the by, the, by your new financial well, director? No, or it, it was done by prior. administration but, okay. but I think a lot of it was driven by the fact that uh, we have this new budget uh, director of finance and administration, his name's Chris Dioro. Uh, he comes uh, after running yeah. the, the retail division of CVS for oh. uh, I did read a, that a too, $40 yeah. billion dollar operation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we have time, I'd love to tell you yeah. about that process of attracting him. But, yeah, I would be very um, interested in that because it <coughs> sounds like just exactly the right person for the job. He's a person that will actually, uh, I, I, I think he'd be transformational for this, uh, this position in this town. Mm -hmm. Now, saying all that, um, yeah. get back to the budget. Right. We are submitting a budget that has a 0% increase um, in the tax levy and actually has a 100,000 plus or minus decrease in the top line budget. And the, 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 uh, we're pleased, I guess, to say that within that budget is full day kindergarten. Yeah, that was, that was a, uh, I, I was really shocked to hear that. That's a very expensive process. So. Well, it's an expensive yeah. process because we, we need space. Mm -hmm. Well, we right. happen to have available room. So, uh, and and mm -hmm. in, in past years, sometimes we couldn't even consider it because we just right. didn't have yeah. the physical space. We have the physical space to put them in. So then did we have the, the, the budget dollars? Right. And we were able to um, define within the, current budget, uh, the, the ability to actually add, I think it was 2.8 positions in total okay. for the two elementary schools. Now, this isn't a, this isn't nice to have. In today's day and age, this is a necessity. Mm -hmm. um, with all the changes to curriculum, with all this uh, kind of focus on testing of mm -hmm. our kids, and right. whether we're in favor of that or not in favor of that. Um, a half day, a two and a half hour day for kindergartners just isn't enough. 
Now, uh, and I think they're, for their social well-being, for their academic well-being, um, actually going to full day is, is a phenomenal uh, step forward for this district and uh, for, you know, I, I think Portsmouth in general. Mm -hmm. um, I think, think, every, of, think I think we all economic, agree. I mean, think of the economic it's, impact. It's been on the, in the discussion, uh, Hopper, for years and years and years. And, but <clears throat> perhaps under a, a, a review of, of the operating expenses, et cetera, that, that you've obviously done over there, that you, know, you can find a way to do this, and the timing couldn't be any better. Well, I mean, we've been fortunate because I think the timing is perfect. Mm -hmm. and, and the yeah. fact that um, we may have actually had funds in, in budget uh, mm -hmm. that uh, were, yeah. weren't were necessarily allocated um, yeah. uh, to a defined purpose. I, mean, yeah. I think right now, I think this is the absolute proper investment in our kids and in, in this mm -hmm. town. And yeah. I think it attracts people. Yeah, I, I, oh, absolutely. I've always wondered where the, uh, the reserve that seems to have accumulated so effortlessly over years is, uh, I guess, now that you're managing it a little differently. Well, I think what we're, uh, this school committee, and I'm, I'm very proud to be, um, you know, heading a group that uh, all seven members are fabulous, uh, uh, to call them out, uh, Terry Denise Cordfriend, Emily Copeland, uh, Tom Vadney, John Wojciechowski, Andrew Kelly, uh, Fred Ferber. Um, it's, a, it's a very intelligent group. Um, it's a fun group to um, actually put a problem on the table and, and, and work through a solution. In this case... I think that we are part of a strategic plan. One of the core goals of this, of, uh, within that strategic plan, which we hope to uh, put forth by June, um, is full day K. And the fact that we were able to uh, put it in the budget for FY14, I think, is, uh, uh, is testament yeah. to, uh, you know, kind of the commitment of the school committee. Yeah. Well, I can see I, I think the article that I read about it, the fact that you're, you're saving your half of your bus Bus monies, and I mean, there are savings to be had with an all-day event. So. Well, and when you think kids are going one, uh, to preschool for a whole day, and that, and that they only had half a day. So the yeah. actual cost savings, and yeah. and it may fluctuate a bit. It's one hundred forty-seven thousand dollars in buses bus, alone. Bus alone, yeah. yeah and I and know that. and even that yeah. that additional teacher at, at yeah. Melville, or the two additional teachers at Hathaway. I mean, mm -hmm. the reality is, is that um, we've gone a long way just with that. Yeah. Well, uh, good. That the stars are aligned. Bus. We got the space. We got the money. We did what we should. That's great. Well, and what's important for us, <clears throat> though, um, and then I'll, uh, is can we afford this going forward? And, and so part of this commitment is that we have looked forward and um, in very difficult uh, mm -hmm. kind of uh, state aid uh, uh, days oh, yes. um, that, um, you know, can we sustain this program going forward? And we believe we can. Yeah, you're, uh, you're facing... Um, uh, new contract uh, terms with uh, our teachers, and I, <clears throat> I assume that, that somehow that has been factored into your into your budget logic. So uh, uh, that contract is up when the contract is, is actually I think it expires on in August. So you uh, are in negotiations a, with the union now. Uh, we have not entered. We wanted to okay. actually finish the budget. We're doing some things upstate. Um, and uh, with uh, NEARI, uh, but um, and that's gone uh, very, uh, that's gone well uh, okay. to date with our council. Um, so we'll begin negotiations. But we yeah, we built that, in yeah. a, a an escalator. <coughs> okay. Um, I think one of the biggest things uh, there's a great deal of uh, demand for curriculum updates and the professional development that's associated with mm -hmm. the uh, curriculum update. So one of the biggest things we'll be discussing at the bargaining table would be professional development time. And uh, in this budget, we have put uh, roughly about $125,000 uh, in addition to what we have historically budgeted for professional development of our teachers. And, and it's all great to have a new curriculum, but if we're yeah, not actually- if you don't actually, have the right teachers right. to do it. Well, so. no, we have the right teachers. No. If we, we just need to give them the development time to um, actually assist them in, in building curriculum. Good, good. Um, <clears throat> you presented to the town council uh, last December uh, a, basically a new, <clears throat> a new program. I think you called it STEAM. Why don't we just spend a few minutes to tell us where, where you are with that logic? Is that actually moving forward? Is 
It is, and, and I'm happy you brought it up yeah. because it, it is, if you will, my big um, okay. uh, idea. If uh, Now, I think the public needs to know that the state aid is declining on an annualized right. basis to Portsmouth. And the state aid formula actually has basically a 10-year ramp. And that ramp is actually in the negative and it's cumulative. So this year we're going to lose $246,000 in state aid. Now the only thing that can make up that state aid is if we have town appropriation to actually backfill mm -hmm. that need. We don't need that this year, but we will need it in subsequent years. So what happens is, is as we look out in long-term budgeting, if the state aid is basically declining at a 200, let's say 40, $250,000 a year, mm -hmm. and it is cumulative to a point where eight years from now we're going to be $2 million less in state aid that has to be backfilled by uh, town appropriation we have to do something different. So the STEAM initiative, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math, is an effort by which we want to attract external students to Portsmouth. We want to actually create a model program that actually is driven at a college level for the premier learners within this region. And in saying that, there, are, there is another STEAM initiative, which I'd like to discuss quickly. But our idea is that we actually try to attract the best and the brightest. We try to create a school within a school that it, 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 it's focused on enhancing mm -hmm. our public education in a public school environment with our existing staff and uh, new staff. Um, saying that. RIDE gives us the ability to have innovative 10 through 14 initiatives. So this whole college bridge period. So we are talking with a higher education institution about how, what we can do to partner with them mm -hmm. and to deliver really what I would hope is to be an actual revenue maker on the front end for Portsmouth in that we may be able to attract kids from outside the region. And then two, um, saving our our uh, college level families a significant mm -hmm. portion of potentially year one and maybe yeah. year two expenses. Can you do that online? I mean the online world of education is, is expanding exponentially I suppose. Well I, as you know I mean I come from the technology mm -hmm. um, right. uh, field and the reality is is online learning has a place but it's, it is not the same as having the collegial environment of actually mm -hmm. having a class if we were going to actually ha uh, stand a very advanced calculus course, I would say we probably could attract maybe six students in Portsmouth to attend. Yeah. But if we were actually attracting from other districts, we could probably fill that class with 18 kids, all challenging one, one, yeah. one another. But if you did it online, they don't have to physically come to you. But if you don't do it online, they're going to have to drive to you. But there's, a, there's a reason yeah. why, I mean, in, in, uh, I mean, we've worked with PhD student level uh, uh, kids at Brown for years, and, and there's a reason why you have lab environments. There's a reason why you have, sure. uh, you, you join together to actually debate and to, mm -hmm. to work out, um, uh, you know, let's say problems together. Do you um, think that the, um, being new and unproven, I suppose, that, that there's some kind of a, uh, <coughs> a test that you can do a test class that you could run to see if the whole thing could be expanded to uh, to the extent that you think about it. I mean, well, something it's some small level to start. Um, sure, trying maybe. To attract. Maybe, um, yeah. maybe. I mean, the the thing is, is that there's nothing that isn't proven and tested in a, yeah. in a STEAM initiative. So it sounds like you're still in conversation about this particular initiative, though. Well, we are. We're not going to see it. It's not. It's not in your budget that you send. It is not. No. No. Okay, no. So. And and um, it is something that I would hope that would materialize somewhere uh, in the in the next school year, but probably mm -hmm. wouldn't actually be in our schools okay. until 2016. Well, we'll get you uh, back FY here 16. for the show a year from now. There Maybe we can talk about that. <laughs> The uh, Rhode Island Department of Education <clears throat> been in the news uh, recently um, over the fairness of the uh, state assessment system, the NECAP, the uh, uh, Rhode Island Diploma Plan, et cetera. Can you talk just a little bit about that? How is that affecting you? So uh, uh, NECAP stands for New England Common Assessment Program. Right. Um, it was originally designed as uh, under No Child Left Behind as an assessment for regional school, mm -hmm. for the school itself versus right. the student itself. Um, there, uh, rightfully, I think uh, people are questioning 
um, the efficacy of the kneecap test relative to what we call this high stakes test for graduation. Um, as you are aware, Rhode Island changed right. their diploma plan right. and requires basically proficiency, uh, um, partial proficiency um, of the kneecap uh, uh, test in 11th grade. Now we have roughly, I think we have less than 10 students in the uh, English portion that need uh, support from our present 11th out grade of a, students. Out of a total of how many 11th grade students? Uh, probably 240 okay. to 200, let's say. Um, and then we have roughly about 45 students in the math. And so what this will do is it, we, we will, and we put $20,000 in the budget to actually focus on summer school programming. Yeah, so that's, that's um, remediation. I mean, that's additional that's, teaching staff that's and right. time. Yeah. yeah, and it, it may actually involve um, in their study period, um, or uh, okay. I think uh, they don't call it study, but I'm forgetting what they call sure. it at the high school. Um, they may actually have to take another math class, so they'll okay. actually take two math classes in their How senior is, year. Uh, besides the when the test scores come in, that it identifies Johnny as as an issue here. Now, <clears throat> does a group of from of teachers from the guidance department sit down with the principals and, oh, and I mean they, and say, okay. We've got these number of kids. This is we need have individual learning plans, I suppose, of yep. some sort, to for each one of those. All of the above. I mean, yeah. our staff okay. does an amazing job of identifying them and now uh, making sure that they have the proper resources. And and okay. just if you do not, if you're not partially proficient on the kneecap, and this is a tenth grade level test, right. then what happens is you take the test again your senior year. If you don't pass it, then then we we actually look at other. Uh, testing that could actually suffice for the kneecap. Mm -hmm. So these kids will be given every opportunity uh, to okay. uh, to make sure they have you, the structure. You weave the parents into this equation uh, because it would seem to me that uh, uh, I would not want to know <coughs> at home exactly how my my child is doing. I think if our, there's a deficiency. The district okay. actually does a great job communicating okay. to parents. Okay. Now, what people should know, though, is that this kneecap actually is now going to be changed to what's called the PARC assessment. Right. And that would be by uh, 2015. And PARC stands for Partnership for Assessment of Readiness of College and Careers. And okay. this is that a regional friendly. system? It is not. There not? are 42 okay. states participating uh, in this. Massachusetts uh, is okay. one of them. Okay. But one of the interesting things about PARC is it's all done online. So it's all done uh, through uh, computers or tablets. The oh, problem we're facing okay. is is that uh, this is another tablets. unfunded. Big tablets uh, are $500 a whack, probably. Yeah. And computers are $800 yeah, a whack. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the reality is this is another unfunded mandate that we have to struggle okay. with as a school district to say, all right, I mean, and we're facing this anyhow. Education yeah, requires it's, it's technology. It's 2015, so we got a little bit of a head start we can well this next budget year is FY14 14, so, yeah, so. Um, you know and, yeah. and if it's going to be in effect on 20 uh, mm -hmm. on FY15 is, <coughs> is, is that system in being employed now in, in several states so no, it's a brand new exam brand um, new test okay. that is based on what's called the common core curriculum yeah, right. and the common core curriculum is what the state actually <coughs> has uh, um, mandated that all districts go to hmm. so we're <coughs> If we if kneecap goes away, and we're all at, at park, um, the the notion that uh, some adults are being asked to take the kneecap test in the state and are not faring very well uh, in it uh, is that is the park testing going to be that much dissimilar to kneecap? Well, I think I think it's uh, it's developed differently. It's okay. developed to actually identify the um, the. Uh, the level of achievement of a child, yeah. where the kneecap was never uh, developed that way. So okay. if you go into the notes, everyone questions on 11th grade math why yeah. the state has on average a 41.5% um, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. obtaining uh, proficiency. Yeah. Well, the reality is, is that's exactly how the test was developed. Oh, I see. And it's, it's and a bell curve. It is. I mean, yeah. and, and okay. it's it's um, so it was never meant to focus on the child. It was never meant to be that tool that says, you know, yeah. if you can't meet that benchmark, you're not going to achieve in life. I mean, so I think what the students up in in Providence and um, and rightfully so are just calling attention to the fact that statistically. Um, that uh, certain, let's say, 
certain districts are, have, uh, are struggling with the perception of achievement yeah. when maybe their students are doing a little bit better than, than what the tests Understood. will tell us. Believe it or not, we're running out of, uh, out of show time There's here. never it's, enough it's, time it's for the schools. It's an amazing conversation. <laughs> you know? But <clears throat> I was uh, thinking about how, um, how great it is that we've got people like yourself and um, the other like the town officials, all volunteers basically, uh, working for practically no stipend. What is the stipend, by the way, right now for the so the, um, the chair gets fifteen hundred dollars. Each member gets a thousand dollars, and the clerk, I believe, gets twelve hundred and fifty. So if you if you average it out by your hour spent <laughs> on the process against the dollar, you're probably working for what? Wait, wait, I got two it. cents. Two cents an hour. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> I want to personally thank you and and all of the other uh, members of our school committee for uh, putting the amount of personal time you have into it as if you're a working person with a family and, uh, and you're spending a great deal of time on the people's business and, and that's a very commendable thing. The <clears throat> uh, I understand that along with the 375th anniversary of our fine town, uh, I understand that the high school is, is going to be 50 years in the game. In, a, in the couple of minutes we have left, how did, <clears throat> we used to go to Rogers High and that's then correct. and 50 years ago we decided to, uh, to bond and, and just to be true yeah. to Portsmouth's uh, true uh, nature, I, um, I believe that what I have heard is the first bond was actually denied. They did. Um, so, that uh, sounds right. <laughs> that sounds yeah. absolutely right. Yep. Um, so uh, we will be celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Great. construction and the opening of the Portsmouth okay. High School. Um, I think that will really roll off in the fall. Yeah. Hopefully, um, our award-winning band will be there, our, making a our, lot of great music. I mean, what a what a fabulous <coughs> year for our band, yeah. and and what a yeah. fabulous year really for Portsmouth to actually yeah, uh, have that honor. But um, yes, and uh, so if if anybody wants to find out exactly what the plan is up at the high school for the fiftieth, uh, go to the website. Not yet. School but committee's website. Soon. It's heading uh, that It'll way? be in the okay. high school website. So, okay, um, but the district website yeah. and. Uh, uh, good, good. Yeah. The same with our 375th. Uh, if you go to our town website and get onto the 375th website, uh, you'll see that uh, I think the next event we have uh, is an Easter egg hunt, hunt on uh, March 30th down at the Brown House. But, uh, so <coughs> we, uh, we are now out of time. I want to thank Dave Croston from our uh, school committee for spending the time with us. Thanks. Pleasure. And thank you for watching. As part of Portsmouth, Rhode Island's 375th anniversary celebration, historian James Garman is doing a series of lectures on Portsmouth's history. Hopefully this will stimulate people to get involved, to get interested, and hopefully we'll get some more writing going on. Jim's next lecture, Portsmouth 100 Years Ago, will be given at the Portsmouth Town Hall at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, April 9th. Come and join us for a great experience on Portsmouth's rich historical past. More on the lecture series, including a video of Jim's first lecture, the founding of Portsmouth, and other celebration information, is available on the Portsmouth 375th Celebration website, www.portsmouthri375.com.